Hey guys, it's Brie here at Blossom and Branch Farm. I am here to de-influence you and also just to get us all thinking about the materials that we're putting into our garden, the materials that we're putting into our soil, the materials that we're putting into our body at the end of the day, especially if we're growing produce at home. For today, I wanted to talk about this. What is this? What is this, you might be asking? This, my friends, is a grow bag and it is, um, here it is, it's brown and it's a bag that you can put soil in and you can grow things. These are handy for people who have limited in-ground space, maybe renters, maybe people with only patio gardening space and so maybe don't have a lot of room to plant in the ground. Now planting in the ground is always my number one choice even if you have crappy soil. I always think it's best to amend the soil that you have and go with that. You're probably gonna be better off doing that than buying a bunch of expensive stuff, but that's a whole nother video. Some of us, it's just not an option for cost purposes or maybe physical restrictions, or again, if you only have a patio, grow bags can be really handy, but there is a big but here. <laughs> There's a big problem with the popular grow bags out there on the market. So. I'm not gonna name brands, you guys can go out and look and research for yourself. Most of the popular grow bags that you are going to find on the market right now are made with plastic fabric. What am I talking about when I'm talking about plastic fabric? Most of them are made with recycled PET, which is recycled water bottles, plastic water bottles. Now, on the surface, this all sounds well and good, and hey, we're recycling plastic, this is a good thing, right? Let's talk about plastic recycling for a second. And by the way, no, this one is not plastic, we'll talk about what this one is at the end of the video. Plastic recycling sounds like a really good idea. However, like we talked about in our video where we reviewed some seed starting cells that were made with recycled plastic, we brought up the issue that plastic recycling is just not part of a circular economy, and why is that? because of a lot of the inputs that happen with plastic recycling and a lot of the things that come out of plastic recycling. So when the plastic recycling process is happening, what's happening is these plastics get ground up, ground up, ground up into tiny little pieces, and then they get remelted together. There are usually some things added. We'll talk about this in a minute. And then you get pallets that can be formed into different things. In that chewing up process where they're breaking down those plastics, what happens is microplastics are released from that process. When you think about the number of plastic recycling facilities that are out there, most of these are impoverished countries where this process is taking place. Most of them have very lax oversight, where here in the US we have a lot more restrictions on what can enter the water supply. That's not really the case in third world countries where a lot of this recycling has taken place. So microplastics are the first issue. The second issue is things that are being added to this plastic recycling process. So, so what has been found is that we mentioned that there's not a lot of oversight. So what can happen is that other plastics, aside from the ones that were supposed to be used, often get thrown in during the recycling process. And those have often been treated with things like flame retardants. Those have a lot of phthalates in them, dioxins, things that you really, really don't want to be having in contact with your soil or things that you're growing for food. So between the microplastics issues and the fact that other things can often get added in during this plastics recycling process, these are both problematic. And then there's the third issue, which is that during the plastic recycling process, they have to bring this plastic back together. So after they grind it up and break it down, they usually add things. Studies have shown, and I'm gonna link all of the research and studies down below here in the description so that you can read up on this on your own. Don't take my word for it, please do your own research. But things are added and what the research shows is that recycled plastic is actually higher in chemicals that get leached into whatever is being contained within that plastic than virgin plastic. That is to say, recycled plastic is more toxic than virgin plastic. So plastic as a whole, you guys know I talk about it all the time with my seed trays, with our landscape fabric, all of these things I try to minimize as much as possible. And grow bags are a really big thing that I've seen. Everyone is using them, but is it safe to grow in them is the question. So here's the research. There's not much. <laughs> there has not been a lot of research out there. So what we do know is that these fabrics do two things. One is that fabric tends to shed microplastics really readily. So when we're looking at, say, for example, I'm looking around for anything that's plastic. I don't, I don't have anything, but pretend that this pot, pretend this pot is plastic, okay? So this is a hard surface. It's going to shed fewer microplastics than a fabric, okay? So when we're thinking about 
here's my, let's say that this is a grow bag, you know, and we do this, you can probably even see in the screen that little pieces shed off. So the nature of fabric is to shed. And this is why microplastics are an issue with our laundry, right? It's recommended to get a filter for your laundry washing machine so that you can filter out these microplastics before they hit our water supply because as clothes are washed, they're exposed to water, they're agitated, microplastics shed off. The same thing is happening with grow bags. So grow bags that are made with plastic materials, every time we're filling them with soil, we're stirring up that soil, that soil is exposed to UV, which contributes to the shedding and the breakdown. They are moist. All of these factors contribute to microplastics shedding into the soil that is within these grow bags. And microplastics have been proven to negatively impact soil microbial life. And some of those plastics do end up in our food. So if we're growing food at home with the goal of trying to grow healthier food, growing it in plastic grow bags to me is counterintuitive. The other issue that we look at with these plastic grow bags is the fact that there is leaching of chemicals. So we mentioned already that there tend to be more chemicals in these plastic fabrics and especially in the recycled ones versus in virgin fab versus even virgin plastics but either way plastics as a whole just tend to contain things like phthalates um, a lot of these companies will advertise that they're bpa free bpa sure it's one of the things that we should be concerned about but it's not the only thing there's dioxins there's phthalates there's other things that we need to be concerned about when we're looking at plastic not just bpa so this is the other issue and the studies here haven't really been run on again, soil application. So using these materials to put soil in, that really hasn't been studied. But what has been studied is water in recycled plastic water bottles. And I'll link this study here below too. But what has been found through studies is that the water in recycled plastic water bottles has a lot more chemicals in it through leaching than virgin plastic water bottles. And this is why they recommend don't leave a plastic water bottle in your car and then drink the water because the heat and the moisture is what leads to the leaching of the chemicals into whatever is being contained within the container. So water or moist, warm soil, if it's a grow bag. So what am I suggesting? <laughs> well, as I've always mentioned, guys, growing in the ground is always gonna be the most eco-friendly option. It's gonna be the lowest impact in terms of sustainability. It's gonna require the least amount of inputs. Now, obviously I know there are things like physical disabilities, maybe you have back problems, you need a raised bed, or you need to grow in containers because you have a patio, totally get that. There are some other things that you can do, and this is one. I don't have an affiliate link or anything for this, but I'll tell you the name of the company. This is actually a hemp bag, and it's 100% hemp. Now, this one will probably only last about two seasons max, okay, because it is a biodegradable fabric, okay? The polyester grow bags are going to end up in landfill at the end of life. So yes, they're going to last longer because they're going to last longer. When we're talking about also our planet, they're gonna last longer, okay? For me personally, I'm cool with something that's gonna biodegrade. So this is gonna biodegrade. It's gonna break down within a couple of years, probably two seasons max. And when you're moving it, you'll wanna lift it up from the bottom. Some people are allergic to hemp. If you're allergic to hemp, there are also wool grow bags. We are really trying to get Sustainagrow to bring their wool bags here to the US. Right now they only sell in New Zealand, but they have wool, which will also last you a couple of seasons. And there are also burlap. So if you are low on funds, if you have a coffee roaster in your area, go and see if you can grab their burlap bags. Yes, they will break down, okay? You'll probably wanna use some kind of terracotta clay tray underneath those grow bags so that if the bottom does go out when you go to lift it, it's all contained. But using a burlap coffee bag would also work. As always on this channel, I like to give the full picture. And that being said, uh, I will be using, I am trialing these hemp bags this year. We will see how they go. Let me know if you have tried any alternatives to the plastic grow bags and how it went in the comments down below. And let me know what you want me to talk about next. My opinion is not the be all end all. Again, I encourage you to do your own research on all of this. I'll put the studies and research down below so you can reference those and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and all of those things. And we'll see you guys around here next time at the farm.